We're back with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're here speaking with Jennifer Jim from the Twin Rivers Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Okay, now you do a lot of things. You teach band, orchestra, AP Music Theory, and AVID at Foothill High School. Yes, that is correct. That's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. <laughs> I have the funnest subjects though, so. So tell me about AP Music Theory. I mean, we, we, we talk, we've talked a lot with other teachers before about you know band and orchestra and really interesting uh, yeah. you know, teaching kids the basics of music but talk about AP music theory um, so AP music theory it's really it's really quite interesting um, it basically goes through the uh, the why of music why does this sound a certain way why is uh, what like what are the patterns there are all these patterns in music that like um, are you know that that uh, are like a common thread through a lot of the um, things that were uh, like a lot of things that composers wrote why does it sound this way why does it make us feel this way it makes us feel this way because it's like a combination of a uh, certain pattern of notes that we do over and over again and what you know people found is that people love the sound of those combinations and those combinations ended up taking precedent in our music today and um, it kind of teaches the kids the um, the uh, the the details behind um, behind why what they're hearing is so significant. Do you take those uh, songs from like the 19th century and and say let's look at music today? Notice similar patterns? Absolutely. And actually, yeah. we start all the way from the very very beginning. Mm -hmm. And those patterns actually started at the beginning, and they have continued to stay with us all the way through these years. And it's just showing the kids how this pattern has worked consistently over and over and over again and how that pattern has been simplified and simplified and simplified into the music that we listen to today and it's really interesting because in the end the kids kind of figure out oh that's why that song was so catchy that's why Britney Spears was so cool that's why mm -hmm. um, you know all these songs follow this pattern it's because it's something that's pleasing to everyone's ear and they kind of know the secrets as to why we decided to do why that artist decided to do that so, so you break it down and you, and you make them understand that music doesn't just happen. Yes. There's a lot of planning involved. Yes, there's a lot of planning. <laughs> so let, let's talk about the importance and, and the value of music in education. I mean, not just the music itself, but the impact that studying music has on other subjects, mm -hmm. like maybe math or, mm -hmm. or something else. I think that the cool thing about music is that it really is just simple math. And every time I teach it to the kids, um, you know, a lot of them come in and they say, I don't know how to do that. I'm like, oh wait, but yes you do. Do you know how to add? Do you know how to add one plus two? Do you know how to add up to the number four? If you can do that, you can understand music. Um, and when we start at that basic level and we build upon that, um, you suddenly have kids understanding um, more complex situations like subdivisions and all these things that you know they always dream of knowing, but they're not quite sure how to get there. Um, and they're incorporating all these uh, other subjects into their music. And then in addition to that, I mean, there's so much history in music and there's so much historical influence that, that music has on history and that history has on music. And when you show that to the kids, they see this like relationship um, between music and all of their other subjects, which a lot of people forget about. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it really is something that I'm passionate about bringing to their attention and to the attention of, um, you know, a school and um, making sure that I'm showing the kids that this is not just a singular subject, this is not just a subject that is just music and that only falls into one category, it's something that is more than that. Music facilitates other learning. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I think it's a good exercise for your brain too. Yeah. And w once the students see that kind of connection, how does that impact their other learning, their other subjects? Um, I think that once they realize one thing that I see is that when the kids realize that they are capable of understanding, you know, how to play music, and then furthermore, un uh, understanding music, then they suddenly realize their own capabilities. What are they capable? They can do anything. If they can figure this out, they can figure out anything that they want to. They can do anything they want to because they have, um, because they're smart, and they've always been smart. They just didn't know it, mm -hmm. and so. Um, I think that um, the power of music is much greater than um, just you know using your math skills or making you smarter. It it makes you realize your potential. I think it's a, kind of a collection of math, science, and foreign language all in one. Yes, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So now you're also uh, an avid teacher. Yes. 
explain briefly what AVID is and, and what you do. So AVID is a program. It is academics via individual determination. Um, and basically what the program is doing is that we are trying to find kids who need that support, who need that extra push to succeed in school, and we kind of take them and we make sure that they're heading in the right direction. And so in our classes, uh, we make sure that the kids have an opportunity to uh, learn collaboration with each other in our tutorials. That's the, you know, one of the main things of AVID is to have a tutorial. And the tutorials group the kids up by subject, and they have the kids kind of try and figure out uh, how to solve a problem by pooling their knowledge together. And I think that's so important, especially now that we have Common Core coming, that the students kind of learn how to collaborate with each other to figure out what's going on. And I've seen really, really magical things happen during these tutorials. Um, students have come together when one student doesn't understand something and the rest of them do. They definitely have come together. I've seen them come together to help this one student with their understanding and to make sure that um, they're going to succeed, so looking out for each other. Um, in addition, part of my job is to make sure that their grades are on track, their GPAs are on track. Um, when I have juniors and seniors, part of the job would be to make sure that you know they, um, they, they know when the deadlines are for uh, applying to their CSUs or for getting in that personal statement for their UCs and making sure that they get that application in and helping them through the FAFSA process, the mm -hmm. financial aid process. Um, it's really, really a fun program, and um, I mean, and, and it's growing rapidly in schools. Well, it's, it's been proven too that, that the college going rate is so much higher mm -hmm. for students who su successfully go through AVID. Absolutely. And Absolutely. You, I'm sure you've seen it at Foothills. Absolutely, I've seen and I've seen the kids like go, coming in and not understanding why they should apply their AVID strategies, um, and the AVID strategies are writing, inquiry, uh, collaboration, organization, and reading. Um, they come in knowing these strategies and knowing, you know, I should be reading, I should be organized, but they come out, I think the goal is always for me to make them realize why it's important. I want them to know why do you have to apply these. It's important because um, it's important to be a hard worker. Um, and I tell them all the time, many things that I've uh, accomplished in life it's never been because I've been the smartest person. It was never really because I was the, you know, the, the prettiest person. It was because I was a hard worker and because I understood this concept of deadlines and um, getting in my paperwork on time. So what inspired you to become a teacher? Oh man, it started uh, at a, probably what? started in high school. Uh, so I had two teachers, um, my history teachers, uh, Mr. Shavetta and Mr. Peterson, and both of them first of all, showed me the um, power of good teaching. Mm -hmm. um, so both of them kind of team taught, and um, I was part of the IB program in, at the high school, and they basically team taught to make sure that they were tiering and scaffolding all of their lessons to lead us to this big exam that we were all gonna take. And from the moment I walked into the room, I knew that there was a plan. Every single lesson, there was a plan that was leading me somewhere. And because I felt that plan, I wanted to get on the ship with them, and I wanted to, I wanted to succeed for them. I wanted to do the best I could for them. And um, now looking back in hindsight, I realized that the power that influence had on me, and it was that it made me an independent learner. I knew that I had to take notes when I went to college. I didn't need anyone to tell me. I knew I had to study. I knew I had to um, manage my time. And then I think that the, the, the ultimate point for me was when I decided to become a music ed major and I student taught. Mm -hmm. And my master teacher, Mr. Park, he was so hard on me. Uh -huh. I remember coming unprepared one day. And you know, it was, it was a decent lesson, but there were definitely holes in it. And he held me afterwards. And I remember him telling me, don't you dare do that to the kids again. Don't you dare do that. Um, your job is a, to be a teacher. Your job is to be an educator. And when you make lessons like that, that have loopholes in it, that you know the kids don't know what to expect, what does that tell them about who you are as a teacher? And I understood in that moment how the great responsibility that we as educators hold. And um, I think that it made the job feel very special. And I realized that it was something that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I came out of that whole experience loving teaching more instead of um, kind of shying away from it. It made me realize that teaching has a purpose and I wanted to be part of that purpose. 
and I wanted to help people. Mm -hmm. And it, it was, I'm so lucky that it was such a good fit for me. And all of that led you here to be a, one Absolutely. of the teachers of the year for the Twin Rivers Unified School District. How about that? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, well, congratulations to you. Thank We've you. We've been speaking with uh, Jennifer Jim from the Twin Rivers Unified School District. Congratulations. Thank you so much.